Here's a compilation of the latest Contessa cookies. I hope you enjoy this buffet of a wide range of topics from clothing and dance to food and random medieval tableware. Enjoy. Welcome to Quickies with the Contessa. Today we're going to discuss an item that is practical for sewists medieval to modern. This is a needle case from actually the 15th century. It's a replica of this original that you can see here. And as you notice, it contains needles and you can actually attach it to your belt or carry it in a pouch with you. We have examples from the 14th century as well that are made of leather and two extant examples made of metal of some stripe or another from the 15th century. So if you would like to keep your needles contained and transportable, I can highly recommend this handy little needle case. So if you would like to buy these, there are two main manufacturers and or purveyors of such fine wares. In the United States or in the Americas rather, Billy and Charlie's would be your purveyor of choice, but on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in Europe and or the United Kingdom, then we can recommend pewter replicas. They both have very nice versions and high quality. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to talk about this, the cute little hairnet from 15th century Italy known as a retta. You all have asked me about this, so I thought I'd delve into it quickly. So this is how it sits on my head. It's actually broken. I need to retie, redo a strap on this side. It is made entirely from finger loop braiding, three main bands here, <laughs> my hot spider, and then an interlocking network of smaller finger loop braids in between holding it all in place. It's entirely of silk. I made it in 2008 and it's traveled quite far. Wow. So there you go, your brief Reta discussion. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to be discussing a book that I think every medievalist should have in their library. Select Letters of Alessandra Strozzi, a, a well-to-do lady who lived in Florence in the 15th century. She was the wife of, uh, she, was a, she married into the Strozzi family, who unfortunately had fallen on the wrong side of the conflict in Florence. And so all the men were exiled from the city. And so she was left in Florence to manage the family's affairs alone. And these are all the letters she wrote back and forth, basically to her sons who were in Rome. So here is a choice little bit to pique your appetite. I'm writing to Lorenzo about the various girls we've considered, who have the qualities we want and who would be a match to please you. Because if you want a meal, you need to order it in advance. So if you want more such wisdom such as that, select letters of Alessandra Strozzi. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to expand horizons. The Contessa loves to travel, as some of you know, and she loves to gather pieces from wherever she travels. And here I have a lovely piece of medieval Korean pottery. This actually dates from the Koryo dynasty. It's celadon. Look at this gorgeous shape, the beautiful green of the celadon with the red outlines depicting a lotus blossom. This is actually a replica of a piece that is in the National Museum in Seoul. It's treasure number something something. Put that there. We use it for wine, we use it for water. Our pieces are never impractical. So medieval Korean pottery for the win. Interesting bit of trivia. It seems that these sorts of pictures were actually modeled off of metal ones and they were copied exactly with features that you only need in metal ones. So the reinforcing buttressing here, this little connector piece, that all is reflective of an original metal pot that was then recreated in pottery. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to cover the basics of a dance called the Galliard. This is a dance that Elizabeth I enjoyed and utilized as a form of morning aerobics for most of her life, as far as we can tell. So let's get to it. The basics of the Galliard are literally one, two, three, four, and five. So looks like this. Four little kicks. One, two, three, four. Jump land. And then you lead off with the other foot. One, two, three, four, and five. 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 On the side. One, two, three, four, and five. 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 One, two, three, four. Now let's try it with music. If you're enjoying this compilation, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click on notifications to stay apprised of all the latest and greatest content. Back to your regularly scheduled Contessa. 
Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to have some underwear errata. In this recent video on underwear that I published, there were some challenges issued. One of the main ones was that these underwear that are a reconstruction or my version of the Langberg finds, in fact, do not have the same cut or dimensions as the original. And this is true to a certain extent, as you can see here. They, the originals actually have a wider crotch base, which would actually allow perhaps for a pouch to form, thereby cradling the male bits that I suggested would have no room in the original pair. I've been delving into this more deeply and I'm going to be producing a more lengthy video on women's underwear in the Middle Ages, so stay tuned. On today's Contessa's Quickies, we're answering a question about how to clean this gutural. And if you want to see the video on this lovely piece, right here. So. This has been sitting for too long. We need to get this old wine out and we're going to use freshly boiled water, and I do mean freshly, hence these stylish oven mitts, to simply pour into our gouterol. It is going to splatter, so make sure you hold it away from your face. And that is also why we are using oven mitts. Don't need to fill it up, just enough to kind of get down there. You wanna have enough room to shake, 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 swirl, swirl, swirl. And you may have to let it sit in order for that wine sediment to dissolve, and that is perfectly fine. I can already feel the heat through my mitt here. So we're just gonna let this sit for a little bit. Okay, shaking is done. Time to empty it out into our reproduction medieval mixing bowl. And as you can see, already a drastic change. So that is how you clean your Goudreau. Do not use soap. I don't like using soap at any rate because I think it leaves a residue. Opinions differ on that, but I don't feel a need to use soap. It's not really going to improve anything here. Okay. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to talk about how you can make your own decorative trims for clothing medieval to modern or your accessories. Here you can see an array of examples of these beautiful Braids. This is a technique called finger loop braiding, and we have instructions from as early as the 15th century, exemplars from as early as the 12th century. This is a simple technique that requires no equipment but your fingers and materials. And we have plenty of examples of how it was used to decorate pouches as pouch strings, even the neckline of gowns, for example, this lovely Italian portrait. If you'd like to learn to make this, I'm offering a workshop on it in early October. So go ahead and check that out in the details below. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're going to discuss a book I think every woman should have if she's interested in the Middle Ages, La Trotula, a compendium of women's medical care, but also of women's cosmetic treatments. For instance, for removing wrinkles, for wrinkled old women, take stinking iris, stinking iris, that is gladden, and extract its juice, and with this juice, anoint the face in the evening. And in the morning, the skin will be raised, and it will erupt, which rupture we treat with the above-mentioned ointment in which root of lily is employed. And first, pulling off the skin, which after the rupture has been washed, it will appear very delicate. So, it's nice that they provide the burn treatments or the peels that they recommend. Some things never change. The Trotula, every woman's guide to medieval cosmetics. Today on the Contessa's Quickies, we're gonna talk about sustainable ways to wrap up your food and cover containers that suit both medieval and modern lifestyle. Instead of using plastic, which can leach into your food and has a host of environmental impacts, you can actually use wax linen wraps. So here we have a wax linen wrap that I have made and a reproduction medieval spice jar. It's very simple. You simply put this on, use the heat of your hand to mold it to the container. As then you can see, no time at all, it is wrapped. So I'll be offering a workshop on making these and a tutorial at some point. Wax linen wraps for the win, rather than plastic. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay creative. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If there are any specific topics you would like me to cover in future episodes of the Contessa's Quickies or even in a longer video, please say so in the comments below. Otherwise, stay tuned for your moment of Kitty Zen. You like your travel carrier? Hmm? Binky, binky.